Hey, what's up, iFOMO? What's going on, dude? What's going on, man? Yo, what's up, all man? Studying for micro exam on Tuesday. Not much. Just hanging out. Let's see. What do I look like? Good enough. <laughs> um, I actually just finished watching episode three of Shogun. That show's been very good so far. I also watched the first three episodes of Fallout, and that show's really good so far, too. <laughs> so, some some good TV coming out right now. Lots of stuff to watch. Yeah, so, uh, just watching Fallout and Shogun right now. Both of them are fantastic so far. Um, and then watching Attack on Titan again for, like, the seventh time this year. Uh, we just got the season four, so that's that's great. I've been really enjoying Fallout. So I've been watching it on Disney Plus, but I think they only have the first three episodes. Do I have to go to Hulu to watch the rest, or is not all of it out yet, or what exactly? Uh, what exactly is going on there? Because if I'm watching it on Disney Plus, I don't think I can watch all of it. I think it's like the first three episodes. Or no, wait. No, you're right. It's on Amazon. But I finished episode three, and then it, and then it was just like, next up, Fallout show something, and it wasn't episode four, and I was like, what? But uh, I could be just totally wrong. <laughs> Something's probably just off. But yeah, that one's Amazon Prime. Disney Plus is Shogun. That's right. Shogun is on Hulu, but you can also watch it on Disney Plus. That's right. I got the two mixed up. That's what happens when you watch, you know, two or three shows all, all kind of interchangeably at one time. Shit gets messed up. But yeah, I'll have to keep watching that as well, I guess. I'll, I'll probably finish Shogun because I'm super into Shogun right now. I think it's been pretty fantastic. The only thing that I would say about Shogun, which is a little, it grates a, a little bit on my ears, is the main character, uh seems like he's almost putting on like a fake voice like it's like it's fake gruff um like that's not how he normally would sound he's putting on like a gruff like oh not about this, this way <laughs> it sounds a little like Ugh. um but but otherwise i i think it's all fantastic so far i think shogun's all great so far but yeah i do really like um fallout as well i think they I think they both are just great man we've got some really good some really good uh video game adaptations here recently which is which is awesome i am i am all for the video game adaptations i feel like what was the first really good one was it last of us that kind of like kick-started that was like actually like critically acclaimed like a lot of people really liked it um, and people are like, oh shit, like video games actually have stories we could tell as TV shows. <laughs> and then they started, you know, putting all of these other ones in, in the works. I, I'm glad because what I think is cool about good, uh, games that can be turned into shows, good adaptations is that most of the time, good adaptations come from video games with stories that I want to share with people, but they're, they're not going to play the video games. So I get to share those stories with them in a different format and this, you know, they're much more willing to watch TV than they are play video games. So it just, it's kind of cool in that way. Cause then I get to talk to them about like, you know, all the stuff that I'm into and enjoy and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I like that they're doing that. I think it's, I think, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed the video game adaptations here recently. And honestly, the anime adaptations, I haven't watched airbenders. Another one that I have to, um, I have to watch because I heard was decent kind of like the one piece one where it was like 
it was good and um, entertaining, but maybe not exactly what everyone wanted, but good enough sort of thing. Good and entertaining. And um, so I have to check out Airbender as well. Oh, well, the Cyberpunk show was an anime, so that, that one's a little bit different in, in my opinion, but that show was really good. The Cyberpunk show was freaking great. That was probably my favorite anime that came out, what, last year or two years ago? That was so good. Arcane, man. That show that I can get like three episodes into and then drop it. I've done that four times now with that show. I get three episodes in or I get to the end of like the... I'm trying to think. I get to basically the end of what I would call like the first arc. And then I'm just like, yeah, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> but I want I want to like it. Everyone likes it so much. I want to like it. But I just can't get into it, man. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so tonight I just figured we will go through my trip to Japan. So... I put all of the photos in a drive and we're going to go through all of them. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of doubles and stuff, <laughs> but we're just going to go through all of them. I'm going to kind of explain and tell the different stories that, you know, correspond with each photo, kind of explain what it is. And we'll just go through kind of um, my uh, my trip and how, how it went. Can we call it the vibe drive? <laughs> we can. We can if you want, Mason. How are you doing, man? Um, also I, this was kind of funny. So I am current. Well, I just exported today, finished editing, exported today, a day in the life video. So it's like a, it's like a behind the scenes of what I do normally in a day. Uh, I think it's good. I tried to pick kind of like a more interesting day <laughs> where I actually had some stuff to do. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like it'll be cool. It's like, Behind the scenes of life, uh, the business, uh, the cats, the, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. So, but one thing that was kind of funny, and I'm kind of spoiling a joke in the edit, but I show how I, how I package orders, and it was really funny. So, up until now, I haven't had anyone complain about how I package orders, and you'll see how I package them in the video. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that here, but, uh, Today, I woke up this morning and I had a neutral feedback from a guy. Let me just read this because it's, it's actually ridiculous. Um, I had a neutral feedback from a guy that said, The shipment was in a professional type box with a printed shipping label. It all appeared to be packed in good order. When I opened it, I found the item. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to censor this. Was... Packaged not in, not with what he would think is the appropriate materials. Uh, you using bubble wrap or something similar would have been more appropriate. While the item arrived without any damage, the packing the packing left much to be desired. Like, bro, you got a slab in a PSA Perfect Fit sleeve with no damage. It was shipped perfectly fine, and you're complaining about the insert materials that I use in my packing. Even though it showed up completely fine and not damaged. <laughs> like, what the hell, man? That's like a whole nother level of entitled. So I actually made a comment in the video. I was like, oh, and no one's ever complained about the way that I ship boxes before. And then this morning when I'm finishing up the video, this comes through. So I put, I edited in this with like a, with like a laughing sound and stuff. So yeah, it, uh, it's just funny though. It's just funny. How's it going, Chef? What's going on? I posted a picture. I know Chef responded, but I posted a picture of what's called uh, Tater Tot Hot Dish. And Chef was like right on. It's basically, what did he say? A shepherd's pie, but with tater tots instead of mashed potatoes, pretty much. And uh, it's delicious. It's like a Midwestern staple. I grew up eating it. I still make it today. It's super easy. It's got vegetables and carbs and meat and everything that you'd want in in one dish it's good it's good shit it's good shit i posted it in uh uh oaks discord yeah it's good stuff man um but yeah cool uh but yeah we can go back to it so i'm gonna be talking about my trip to japan we went to tokyo and kyoto so i'm just gonna go day by day i i sorted all the pictures out by which day they actually happened 
And then we're just going to talk about stuff. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or anything that we saw or anything Pokemon card related, I, I did go to a couple stores when I was there. I didn't take any pictures inside the stores, but I can I can kind of tell you what I experienced and stuff like that. This is mostly going to be like different attractions and little stories and stuff from from the different stuff. So it's going to it's not it's not hardcore Pokemon related, but it's just a full encompassing uh, trip review of the whole thing so let's see i think we go here oh yeah okay all right so how's my japanese uh terrible absolutely terrible <laughs> brutal um so this is my brother you're gonna see him in quite a few pictures um i took him this time around nobody's ever gone with me to japan i haven't had like a family member or someone accompany me every time i've gone i've gone by myself so i convinced him to come with me this time and so we went together to japan uh obviously you know we kind of look alike sort of <laughs> if you see my dad if i put a picture of my dad next to me you'd be like holy shit my brother next to me is kind of like yeah they look alike but like my, I, I look so much like my dad it's actually insane um but yeah, so this is us on the plane. I think this is right before we took off. So he he flies a lot for work and stuff. So he's got like the Delta Lounge Pass thing. So before we left, we actually got to... I, I, I've never been in the Delta Lounge before, but it's just full of like free food and drinks and all sorts of things. And he had a guest pass. So we literally just sat in the Delta Lounge and like ate a bunch of food and drank lattes. And it was ridiculous. It was kind of ridiculous. Um, but it kind of sucked because we got there at like 1030 or 11 before our flight and the uh they switched out from breakfast to lunch so we didn't actually eat any breakfast food actually we just ate like cookies and shit which, which was not good for us but uh it's like the clark kent super <laughs> yeah you take his glasses off and shave his head he turns into me and i'm i guess i would be superman in this scenario i don't know if i agree with that but next up so this was our uh airbnb this is where we stayed when we first got to tokyo so we stayed close to i forget what the place was actually called but it's it's close to sakiji so on the east side of tokyo and i really like that sakiji ginza east side of tokyo we did stay on the west side of tokyo and kind of more like the hip young party uh side of tokyo later on and I'll talk about that later, but that was, uh, I would not stay there again. I, I would definitely stay on this side of Tokyo, uh, every time that I go, I think it's just, it's quiet. It's nice. There isn't anything, um, you know, there's not a lot of partying, not a lot of drinking, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of sirens and noise. And it's just a nice place to stay in comparison to, uh, Shinjuku or, Sh or Shibuya. So, and this is actually a decent sized room. So we stayed, I think we did Airbnbs for the whole trip. We didn't do a hotel. So this is, it was kind of like an Airbnb hotel. They have those over there where it's like, it's an entire building that's all Airbnbs basically. So it's basically a hotel, but it's it's just full of Airbnbs. And this this is a pretty decent sized room. Like it has a little kitchen in there. It's got, uh, it's got you know, a shower on this side and then, you know, a little, little refrigerator and stuff in there it's actually pretty decent size for a, like an apartment style uh place in tokyo but yeah that that was a cool place we stayed there and then the the place that i like to go first when i go to tokyo because i and for my brother when i brought him i wanted i wanted to give him a like a good first impression like man this is japan like boom walk right into it and like there it is and i think one of the better first impressions of Japan, in my opinion, is, uh, or especially Tokyo, is uh, Asakusa. So the Sensoji um, temple in Asakusa is amazing, and that's, that's what we're going to get to now. Most of the rest of our my photos from this day are probably from this. So when you first walk up to the actual uh, setup here, you have this, you know, giant gate kind of welcoming you in. On the left side, let's see if okay so we just go into i think there's photos of them but on the uh the left side and the right side there's statues of two different gods i think it's like the the lightning or thunder god and 
um, maybe the wind god on the other side or something like that. Uh, it, it's just really cool. They're very intricate statues. You got the giant lantern going in. The thing is, we went at like, I think it was like 7 p.m., 6 or 7 p.m. It was starting to get dark. And there was quite a few people, not like crazy. It wasn't like shoulder to shoulder, like can't move around freely. Like it can be, I think. But there was quite a few people there. Um, but it, it is a very touristy, it's like probably the number one tourist spot in uh, Tokyo is Sensoji in Asakusa. So when you pass that first gate, it's all shops. So you can see here that some of the shops have already closed. You can see here some of the some of the grates are already down. But it's kind of cool if you come before the shots are open or after they've closed because the lights are still on, but the grates are down. All the grates are actually painted really interestingly. So you, you get like a different vibe if you come after hours versus hours that the shops are actually open. And the shops go all the way down to the, the main part of the temple, which is really cool. And it stays lit the entire night. So this time that was a little bit different than last time is it was cherry blossom season. So obviously they put a lot of these uh, cherry blossom branches to kind of, I don't know, uh, snazz up the the walkway here which was really pretty i mean it was really cool how they how they put this together um this is if you zoom in on his face he is pissed <laughs> if you zoom in on his his face is like what the fuck are you taking a picture of he was so mad at me for taking this photo i don't know why um actually he was kind of frustrated with me when we first got there because i wasn't I forgot that I had been there a few times before and he had never been there at all. So I wasn't really in the mind of like someone who's experiencing this for the first time. I was in the mind of like, all right, let's hop on the train. Let's get in the, you know, and all that. And he got mad at me at one point. He's like, you need to be more communicative. Like you need to tell me what the fuck is going on and how to do this stuff because I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. So yeah, he, he got a little, he got a little frustrated at me before we got, before we got here. But, um, I think I just caught him at a at a bad time in this photo. But yeah, this is all like touristy knickknacky shops. There is some street food places here and on um on like both alleyways either side. Uh this was a cool street that kind of branches off of that that main kind of lit up road. And it's got all these nice little lit up signs and everything going that direction. I think is it that direction or the opposite direction where Tokyo Tower is it might be that direction but kind of up but yeah they have these nice gates this is a really cool place actually I've been there twice on Sunday night and they have some really cool streets that are just full of restaurants full of restaurants full of people like standing outside sitting outside just drinking because their drinking culture over there is insane uh Japanese people drink a lot <laughs> especially like salary men and stuff I think uh, after and you know before they have to go back to work they uh yeah they they uh they tie one on uh but it's fun to walk down the streets and you know they're just it's just bustling there's locals there's tourists it's it's all just a amalgamation of people just drinking and you know having fun and laughing and stuff it's, it's really cool um it's a random photo so as you get closer, you get these kind of lanterns on the left-hand side that are all lined up, but you can see kind of the main pieces of Sensoji. So you got this giant um, temple, basically, and then you have this uh, tower on the left-hand side. Sorry, I don't know the specific Japanese words for these things. Um, but as we get closer, the shops disappear on the left-hand side, and you start to get this really cool wall of lanterns, and then the shops continue until, until basically you get there. So these are those lanterns I was talking about, all of these going here. I'm not sure what they say. Um, they might be advertisements, to be honest. I'm not 100% sure, but they're, they're it's cool because, they're, you know, it's very aesthetic, and it's lit up and everything. Now, this is, like, the main piece. I think the statues are of the same gods... No, this is, these must be my brother's photos because this is the first gate that we saw before, or maybe they're my photos. I don't know, but this is that first gate again with the gods on the, on the left and right and the, the big lantern here they are. Okay. I took close up pictures of the gods. I guess my brother didn't, but so this one, oh, I can't read it. I think it's wind and lightning. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's wind and lightning are the two, um, 
the two gods on either side. This was the uh, pagoda. Is that what it's called? The tower that uh, is kind of off to the left of the main temple. This is the, I think this is the backside of that gate. That's kind of the main temple area. So they were having some sort of, I, don't, I forget what my brother said it was. They like, uh, there was some sort of festival or something going on that night that we were there. So they had these banners up in front. I'm not sure what that says. But then they had a, they did a, um, like a presentation. Everything's kind of lit up. All these lanterns and everything usually aren't there. And there were people holding like uh, fire. Yeah, people holding like these tiki torches, basically. And then they were walking these giant. I think I got a photo of it. Yeah, these these things here, they were walking them through. And I think there's like a few different like rep representations of gods that they take out of the temple and they walk it around the temple and then they put it back in the temple i forget i forget what it was my brother looked it up um but i i forget what it was now but yeah these things were really cool super intricate they were they weren't playing um they weren't playing music they might have been drums i think they were doing drums at the same time you know and it's it's really interesting when you one thing that I noticed, and, you know, it's been like this for a long time, ever since people had smartphones, but, man, nobody was actually watching it. Everyone had, like, their cameras up, everyone's, like, recording it and everything, like, trying to get the good shot. No one's actually watching the thing, like, take place. But, like, how, how good of a video or a, a photograph can I get of this thing taking place? Not necessarily, like, let's just figure out what it is or just enjoy the, like, the ceremony that's taking place. But it was cool. I mean, I, I had never seen it. It must be, you know, this particular time of year, that particular night, just kind of lined up perfectly for it. I didn't know it was going to be happening, so that was kind of cool that we got to see that. Uh, there was also tons of street vendors that night, too, because it was a festival. I think they uh, they had, like, a whole line of street vendors going up uh, the, the side of the temple area. There's, like, this little... It's not a park, but it's, like, a, it's like a resting area on the side of the, the temple. And that's where the street vendors were lined up. But there's obviously like convenience stuff and um, places for kids to play and like seating and stuff on that side. Um, okay, this is another photo of one of those things. You can see like it's all just phones. <laughs> I don't know how heavy these things are, but it took a lot of guys to uh, walk that around the temple. Here's another photo of those lanterns when you're coming into the temple. Another photo of the street. So we went back later. So we went and got dinner and then we came back through later to get to the station. And I was like, oh, let's just walk through it again because there won't be many people there. And everything was closed. But that's when we saw that like all these, um, the gates that get pulled down when the shops close, they're all like uh, hand painted to be something. I don't know if it tells a story like as it goes all the way down or if each shop is different, but they're all hand painted in a way that looks really interesting when you walk down when everything's closed. It was cold, by the way. It wasn't cold today, but when we when we got to Kyoto, I remember it being really cold and it was it was windy. I wore, of course, a baseball cap and <sighs> Every time I had my baseball cap on, the wind was insane. So the whole time, I'm literally holding my hat onto my head, uh, basically the entire trip, and it it was it just pissed me off at one point. <laughs> but I did I did have a stocking cap with me that I switched to um, when it was colder, colder. But yeah, I just ended up wearing the stocking cap more often because it was cold and it was really windy. It's another. You can see just all these paintings on the on the grates. It's just really interesting. This is all nighttime. Came took some more photos at night. You can see it's still fairly busy. There's still quite a few people here, but not nearly as busy as it was when we were uh, doing this before. It's cool that they light everything up too. So every temple and every like shrine is a different experience at night and during the day 
which is really really cool um sometimes they'll have like different ceremonial light shows and stuff with like projections and stuff on the different shrines now and stuff too so but yeah if you if you like i really like sensoji is probably one of my favorite places in tokyo period so i've been there in the morning i've been there at night i've been there in the middle of the day like i i have uh run the gamut of times of days for this for this temple and yeah it's just it's a different experience every time you go at the different times okay can i read it i can't read it you might be right crowd ed it's possible so that is this oh, i keep forgetting is that tokyo tower or the sky tree i think that's the sky tree um i think tokyo tower is almost looks like the eiffel tower and i don't think it lights up like that i think that's the sky tree that's tokyo sky tree um so it's kind of cool getting like the the new sky tree next to the the older you know pagoda or is pagoda the right word because now i'm gonna start saying pagoda and i i don't know if that's actually gonna be right japanese pagoda yeah pagoda yes i got it right hell yeah let's go um so yeah it was kind of cool to to get the juxtaposition of the two structures is that it nope okay we're going wait did we miss one no nope. all right so this was when you're walking out of sensoji there's a gate and then this gate leads to that really fun street i was talking about before where it's like restaurants on every side and everyone's just standing around drinking and having fun so that's a really cool street and this must have been when we first got there and these might be my brother's photos yeah i think these are my brothers that's crazy don't you feel like my photos were way darker than this his iphone must like really adjust the the brightness or the exposure or something of his uh photos because this is wild this is way brighter than it was when we got there <laughs> that's crazy I wonder if he had some setting on that was like nighttime setting that like exposes it more. So there's the uh, Tokyo Sky Tree when it's not lit up. There's that gate again that we saw earlier. A lot of his photos are going to be doubles of mine, but his photos are still cool. Of course, he took a lot more photos than I did, too, so it'd be good to go through them. There's the pagoda again. One of the gods. Oh, he got a video. Hold up. I didn't know that he took videos. Hello. Oh, I don't know how loud this is going to be. Oh, boy. It's only 10 seconds, but... I think we pretty much got the gist of that from the from the photos <laughs> thanks bro all right yeah these uh turn the music back on <laughs> all right so i think this is just a photo of a street <laughs> all right this okay this is the best meal we had the entire time it was the first meal we had there but this is this is in my opinion this was the best the best meal that we had when we were uh in japan this last time it was at a place called donkey tonkatsu and we walked up to it my brother looked on google and it had like a i don't know it was like a 4.6 4.7 something like that it was it was pretty high and we were pretty close to it. So he's like, oh, let's go here. He really likes tonkatsu. He basically likes anything that's deep fried. He'll eat it. So um, we we go to this place and it's it's full. But like by full, I mean it has like 10 people in it. Because it's like the tiniest little restaurant that has probably four tables. Um, so it's full. So she's like, you know, please wait. We're like, okay, we'll wait. And eventually... It's kind of taking a little while so i was like oh you know luke we could probably find a spot where we don't have to wait he's like no 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 let's let's wait it's fine we'll just chill I'm like all right so then we get in here and the nicest people 
absolute nicest. They were super accommodating. Like I had my big backpack on with a bunch of stuff. And before we sat down, they're like, oh, I can store your backpack for you. And they had this little shelf next to the kitchen where they stored my backpack for me. So I was more comfortable at the table. Like we got beers and I got shrimp and uh, pork. I got shrimp and pork and my brother got a pork loin. I think I got like a pork, almost like a pork chopish sort of thing, like a flatter pork cutlet. I got a pork cutlet and he got like a pork uh, loin. And man, it was good. You got this awesome, uh, I think it's just tonkatsu sauce or katsu sauce. That stuff was amazing. Uh, obviously, you get rice, you get some, I think this is cabbage, like a cabbage salad. That's uh, mustard and I think mayo. I'm not a big fan of mayo. And then obviously I got a lemon wedge because I got seafood and then miso soup. And I think this entire meal for both of us with beers, 25 bucks, maybe $25 at most, probably $12 a person. Uh, it, it was awesome. It was fantastic. I would say if any of you guys find yourself in Asakusa, check out donkey, uh, donkey tonkatsu. Good stuff absolutely amazing all right so this is going to be a sakusa at night that's a photo of the sky tree there's the pagoda in the sky tree again he's just copying my photos at this point that's that cool gate to the fun street all right and then that's the end of day one so we just took the train back went to bed we were only in tokyo for that first night and then one full day and then the next day we left for kyoto so so let's see tokyo day two all right so it looks like we're going to start in the team labs planets so i had been to team labs borderless in the past and it's like a it's like an interactive art exhibit is what i would yeah interactive art exhibit so I had been to the Team Labs Borderless the first time that I went to Japan, and I thought it was really cool, and I thought my brother would like the Team Labs, uh, a Team Labs, and I knew that the Planets was open. That's the one I hadn't seen before. What I didn't know about Team Labs Planets, so we got there a little early, and they line you up to show you like a video on the screen to like almost like an introductory thing of like, this is what you need to do when you're inside and stuff like that. It's going through this introductory stuff telling us, you know, how to prepare for the exhibit essentially and it tell it tells us we have to take off our shoes and socks to uh enter the exhibit because there's going to be uh exhibits that are knee-high water and i'm like what <laughs> that was not a part of team less borderless at all uh having to take off your shoes and socks and there definitely wasn't any water that you were standing in it was mostly just like all these projections and stuff so that was weird to have to go barefoot into basically a, a museum, essentially. So that was interesting. But there's different exhibits inside the, the uh, I don't even know what to call it. I keep wanting to say museum, but it's, it's, like a, it's like an art exhibit. But there's different exhibits inside the main exhibit. So this one had like these giant inflatable balls. They were all, they, you know, they were... Uh, projected different colors onto them as you walk through except you we, we weren't allowed to like hit them or anything which is unfortunate i wanted to throw one but you couldn't this is cool so this this is like their was this the first one i think this yeah this is the first one this is like their first impression uh one and it's basically all these crystal things that have uh lights and projections like through them and then there's a little path that you can walk through all of these things but it's really trippy because there's this and then all the way around the room there's mirrors so it, it seems like it just like just keeps going and the the music in there changes the uh the lights in there change constantly they get really bright and then they get dimmer and they change color and they do they do all sorts of fun stuff um so yeah everyone was barefoot <laughs> <laughs> which is interesting and the floor also is all uh is all um mirrors as well so <laughs> there's me <laughs> B 
But yeah, these these things are just constantly changing. So we're just super bright, dim. The music was different. It's pretty crazy. That's my brother. This is the exhibit that was knee deep. You can kind of see this uh, this little girl over here is almost like waist high in the water. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was the one that was that was knee deep. We'll probably go back to it because I think my brother took some videos or some pictures in it, but it's kind of nice because they only let a certain amount of people through at once. So you're not like jam packed into each exhibit. They, they probably let like, I don't know, like 25 to fit, maybe 50 people in at once uh, as you go through. This was weird. This is like out of some sort of sci-fi movie, like alien egg things have like mirrored patterns on them uh really kind of wild yeah so we got some pictures reflective pictures off of the uh the weird eggs this one was cool so it was it was all these flowers that were hung i think they're living like flowers too um they're all hung from the ceiling and the ceiling shifts up and down so basically you you first take pictures with all the flowers that are down and then when the flowers start to go up basically to get out of the exhibit you go underneath the flowers so you can take your time going underneath the flowers while it goes up and then when it's coming back down you leave the exhibit so it's going up you can go underneath the flowers you can take all these pictures like it, it's i don't know there's just something about it like it's not anything particularly crazy but it's just a it's just a fun experience it's not something that I feel like you can go to any day, you know, in America. I feel like it's kind of unique. This was around the corner. I think this was just a, sh a little shrine around the corner from our Airbnb. This is in Sakiji. This is a... Oh, I want to say Buddhist temple, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, it's massive. It's really cool. All right, so we went to, well, this is, this is, might be the wrong day. No, this is the morning of that day. So the first thing we did that morning, we went to the exhibit later on in the evening. But the first thing we did that morning was we went to uh, Tsukiji Fish Market and we tried a whole bunch of different uh, street foods. So I love this place. There's a guy at the very end of one of the blocks that does tamagoyaki i think hold on let me check pretty sure it's tamagoyaki tamagoyaki yes tamagoyaki on a stick it's hot he makes them fresh and they are amazing i love this stuff it's basically like a rolled omelet they have this really they have this like this flat pan that has and they they pour the egg over it and then they kind of roll the egg and then they pour a little bit more and then they roll a little bit more. But there's like a sweetness to it. They must add some sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of sauce to it when they cook it or maybe like some sort of sweet base on the pan um, that makes it a little bit sweet, but it's so good. And it's like 100 yen or something. It's like super cheap, really delicious. This is a theater, I think. I think that's a, a kabuki theater. I think that's what it's called. The kind of the it's like plays and stuff, but it's it's a really cool theater. It's kind of in the middle of all these like modern buildings. You just have this massive, like really interesting old school looking theater. This is Tokyo Station. So this is uh, I don't know if it's the biggest station in Tokyo. I I would assume i think um yeah that was tokyo yep yeah the team lab that we were in was tokyo yep did i say kyoto that's my bad yeah it was tokyo um it was over by odaiba on that side by the the team lab planets um yeah this is tokyo station huge place kind of difficult to i think we got on like the opposite side than i'm normally entering so we ended up kind of on the i don't know if this is considered the front side and i usually go on the back side or 
I don't know. We figured it out eventually. I think we went to Tokyo Station because we were going to buy our tickets for the Shinkansen for the next day for Kyoto. Because for some reason, the app, the there's like a popular app that you can get your tickets off of. Uh, it didn't want to take my payment, my cards. So my brother was able to get it to work with, I think, a MasterCard or something. But it didn't want to take Visa. It didn't want to take um, anything else. It was like... His card worked, but my other cards didn't. So we thought that we'd have to go to the station, and then he figured out in the station how to get the tickets with his card. But it's really easy to just get tickets at the station. That's what I've done in the past, but I guess it's more convenient if you can do it on your phone. I'm just, I'm more of like a physical guy. Like I want, I want tickets. Like I want a physical ticket. <laughs> I don't want it to be on my phone because I can mess up shit on my phone. I just want a ticket. So when we got the digital tickets, I was like, eh. Uh, but it ended up being fine. It, it was it was easy. It was easy. Okay, so we went... My brother's friend... Oh, God. I don't remember what this place is called now, though. Is it Muji? Nope. Uh... Oh, no. What is his store called? Uh... It's not... Oh yeah, it is Muji. Muji Ginza. I was right. I think. Well, that looks like a hotel. No, 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 yeah. Okay, Muji Ginza. So, my brother's friend said that he had to go to Muji Ginza. And I was like, what is it? And he's like, it's just a store. And I was like, okay, like what kind of store? And he's like, well, kind of has like everything. I was like, all right. So it's like, it's like a, it's like a Walmart. <laughs> He's like, no, but it's got like, it's got like a bakery and it's got all this stuff. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go check it out. So we went to Muji Ginza and it's kind of like a Walmart. <laughs> it, it had, it's like, it's like eight stories. There's like a cafe on the top. There's a little uh, bakery on the bottom. Very good stuff, by the way. We did have some stuff at the bakery and it was, it was very good. But, uh, and then everything in between is just like, here's men's clothes, women's clothes, uh, um, uh, what, what would you say? It's basically just like a supermarket, like a really big supermarket. Um, it was cool to go to, but it's not like, not something I would have to go out of my way to do ever again. Uh, but it was, I mean, it was fine. All right. We went to the Pokemon center. So after Muji Ginza, I said, you took me to that place. <laughs> I'm going to take you to a Pokemon center. And so we went to the Tokyo DX, uh, Pokemon center that's near Ginza is it is it technically in Ginza it might be um this is one of my favorite Pokemon centers this one in the Shibuya one we didn't get to Shibuya or else I would have gone through that one again but I've been to this one a few times this is the one that has the cafe attached to it so if you ever go to the Pokemon cafe you'll go to this Pokemon center and then there's the cafe attached to it and then I think in Osaka there's another cafe I think um but this one's really, really cool. You got the big Snorlax and Pikachu, obviously, at the front. And then, obviously, you have all the Pokemon Center stuff. My brother took a photo or a video. All the plushies. The plushie wall. We took pictures next to Snorlax. We didn't buy anything, though, at the Pokemon Center. We bought some stuff at the Nintendo store, but we didn't buy anything at the Pokemon Center. Always fun to go in there, though. The whole time I was actually looking for, I guess it would be called a coin purse. One of those small, like, coin, uh, coin purse. Um, so we, uh, I was looking for a Pokemon one, but most of the ones are, like, very kiddish. So I was like, eh, okay. But I ended up finding a pretty decent one later on. In Japan, you get a lot of coins. Because I think, I think they're, is it up, it's up to 500 yen is coins. And then when you get to a thousand yen, it becomes uh, bills. So you get a lot of like, it goes like one, five, I don't know, one, five, 10, 50, 100, and then 500 or something, something like that. And you get a lot of coins because you still, you still use cash quite a bit when you're in Japan. There's a lot of places do take card, but a lot of places are cash only. Like some of the restaurants that we went to were cash only. Um, so yeah, you do end up with went end up with a lot of change because of you know their currency. 
So I did get a coin purse at some point because it's just better if you have one. You don't have coins, you know, all up in your pockets all the time. So this was, uh, I think this is us walking into the art exhibit, the team lab. So this is crazy. So you walk through this. Basically, this is how they sanitize your feet because you're probably like, when you walk in, if everyone's barefoot, how are how are like how is everyone not walking out with athlete's foot, right, <laughs> or some some sort of fungus? So when you walk in, there's there's a there's a uh what would you say uh, a hallway with like rushing water on the on the bottom of it that cover it's about up to your ankle, and you can you can kind of smell that there's some sort of like cleaning chemical or something in it. So you walk through this long hallway of this rushing water to clean off your feet and then you go into this place which is like basically you go from washing your feet into a room where they're like here dry your feet off with these towels and you're like okay i'll do that but then they still put you through a room uh this room that basically is supposed to completely dry off your feet <laughs> um let's see how much he got of this so yeah you like walk through <laughs> you like walk through this crazy uh, thing but each time your foot kind of sinks into it and it basically um just dries off your feet from the chemicals that were uh put on it so you could go through it so that would be clean uh next up all right these are all my brothers videos and photos from the exhibits kind of saw some of this this was 10 seconds yeah, see how it it's crazy when you're in it. Like when you're in it and all of this is happening around you with the music and the it's it's almost sensory overload. Like you probably would not want to go to this place if you had if you had like seizure issues with lights. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't want to go to this place. Did he catch one of the moments where it like really goes bright? I don't know if he did. It's crazy too because you have all these mirrors around. So then when other people are walking through, you're like, wait, can I get over there? And it's actually just a person you see reflected in the mirror. It's trippy, it's very trippy. That's when it was all blue. I was just walking. Okay, so this was the one that was kind of knee-high water, knee-high-ish. It was cool because they projected all of these fish. So it was like it was like there was all these little uh, little and big fish, of uh, you know, swimming around you. See that? That's it's super wicked when you're in there. Cause they're just they're just swimming around oh man it's so cool i can't say that i thought there was a part of me that was like hmm i wonder if my body is going to see the fish and then think that they're like close to me like i'm gonna feel them or like get a sensation like i feel them i can't say that i did but it was really cool there's the knee high water man i would hate to like fall over on accident in the knee-high water that would be brutal got more fish i forgot what this one was i think it was attached to the fish room but it was like a little room that you walk into and then you see all these uh, lights and stuff. <laughs> With dive head furs in there. Oh, that'd be that'd be not great. Here's all the giant balls. And the reflections. Different colors. Each room had its own like, I guess you could say like soundtrack, essentially. Um it had music going on and then it also you know had its own aesthetic uh 
Oh, yeah. This was called the... I think it was just called the Flower Room. Where this was, that was projected on the ceiling, and then you could just lay down in, on on the the floor and just look up and watch the flowers go by. Very cool. Different types of flowers and stuff. Some of these pictures are hard to get because you're... You're the weird, uh... Alien eggs again. This one was also outside, so it was it was... It was cool, like it was cold. And there was a part of me that was like, man, if they if they really like mystified the ground here, like around the different alien eggs, that would have been really creepy. But it was almost like it was almost like straight out of Alien or Prometheus or one of those movies. It was super weird. But it was cool. Here's the flowers again that kind of went up and down. Alright, here's Akihabara. So that night I took my brother to Akihabara. Uh, we went to an arcade and then we found dinner and we just kind of walk, walked around. It's the, it's the land of the weeb, essentially lots of, um, card shops and stuff in Akihabara, but yeah, everywhere you go, there's uh waifus on every corner. There's also maids on just about every corner and it was super cold. So you kind of felt bad for them because they're out there in their freaking maid outfits, just dying of like they're they're about to freeze to death oh i think my brother's girlfriend likes doraemon so he took a photo of that oh this was our pizza so this was actually oh man this is this was good so i've been here two times now it's called pizzeria noga pizzeria noga pizzeria and bar um in akihabara and this was super good so it was uh, prosciutto and uh, it's like a margarita pizza with prosciutto and like a cracked egg in the middle. And man, was it good. But we we went to order and I ordered this. And then my brother said, I'll have the same thing. And they brought out one pizza. <laughs> they brought out one pizza. Um, because I think I have the all have the same thing means you're going to share. Uh, and we didn't want to share. He just wanted to order the same thing. So when you go to Japan, don't say I'll have that too, or I'll have the same thing. Just order what you are going to order, even if it's the same thing, because that happened to us twice, twice that happened. The exact same situation happened. So whatever I'll have the same thing means, uh, translated for them, it means you're going to share apparently. Um, so yeah, just order what you're going to order make it easy for them instead of you know complicating things like we did but yeah so that uh we had the pizzeria noga that night and then in the morning we left for kyoto so kyoto kyoto day one so the first thing we did when we got to kyoto was we went to arashiyama and we went and saw the monkeys. So Arashiyama is like a, I think it was like a 25 minute Uber ride from Kyoto to Arashiyama. And one of my favorite things to do in Arashiyama is to go see the monkeys. It's like a 20 minute hike. It's a lot of stairs, but when you get up there, you get a beautiful view of Kyoto and you get to feed the monkeys. So if you notice here, we're inside a building they are outside of the building and we are feeding them from inside the building or else it would probably be an absolute nightmare if you tried to feed them outside the building um but yeah you got like little baby monkeys and adult monkeys and all sorts of monkeys the thing is is that monkeys are kind of mean especially when it comes to their babies so if you want to feed the baby monkey, you basically have to keep the adult monkey that's next to it busy or else the adult monkey will grab and take like forcibly take the food away from the baby and eat it. So you kind of have to like feed the adult, feed the baby, feed the adult, feed the baby. You can't just like feed the baby, feed the baby or else the baby's going to get grabbed and like thrown off this, <laughs> thrown off the ledge and, uh, and you know, the parent's going to get the food anyway. So you got to kind of distract the parent to feed the, to feed the baby. 
So this is not the bamboo forest that is like the famous touristy bamboo forest. So I saw, and I think it was an Instagram reel. It's pretty close to the bamboo forest, probably like a five to 10 minute Uber ride. It's really close. It's just a different, it's a different, uh, I think it's a cemetery. It might, I think it's a cemetery, but it it's a shrine I think that has a cemetery attached to it. But yeah, it has, it has it's exactly the same sort of, um, sort of bamboo trees that you would see at the you know famous uh kyoto or arashiyama bamboo forest but it's just not there and there's not a billion people <laughs> it's it's a much chiller environment what's up spencer how's it going oh welcome man you're uh you're going to japan next month right you're from the discord we just got to kyoto <laughs> but yeah back to the monkeys What's up, Bruce? How's it going? Rogue. Uh, so when you feed the monkeys, you're supposed to. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put the food in front of the monkey, and then the monkey takes the food and eats it. There were a lot of you're not supposed to feed the monkey directly. A lot of people fed the monkeys directly, which is, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I've I've fed the monkey directly the first time I was there. This time I, you know, put it on the ledge more because it, you know, I don't want to get grabbed by the monkey. Um but yeah, you can see don't uh, don't close your face on the fence. Yeah, don't put don't put your face on the fence. That would be rough. Monkey about to tear your face off. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's super cheap. It's like fifty yen or something for a bag of bananas or um, some sort of fruits, and you just feed them on the in, on the interior here, or back to the bamboo forest. Back to the monkeys. What happened to these photos, man? They're all shuffled. Okay, so I really like Arashiyama a lot. I just like the aesthetic of it. So these, you can rent out canoes, and I think you can uh, you can rent um, these as well with a guide, and they'll take you through. Okay, we're back to monkeys again. All right, well, I guess I'll hold that story for the next time. So, they're grooming each other. All right, we just back to monkeys. Here's a baby monkey. They're very cute. Here's a parent monkey. These are my uh, monkey photos, I think. But yeah, this, this is kind of funny. They're all just lined up, like, waiting for food. Um, They're all just, like, they're ready, man. And yeah, you're, you're inside and you can't feed the monkeys um, unless you are inside. And they get after each other, man. We, we, you see, we've seen some fights when we were there and it's pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. Baby monkey. Did you take the small train through the mountain? No, I did not. I didn't even know there was one. I'll have to look into that for next time. That sounds really cool. Grooming. So that, that shed that you go into, or the cabin, or whatever you call it, the building that you go into to feed them. Uh, a lot of the monkeys will go on top of the building to, like, sun and, um, and groom. But yeah, you can see like we're pretty high up because that is the rest of kind of Kyoto and Arashiyama right, right down there. More monkeys. Here's a mother and baby monkey. Probably nursing, honestly, now that I look at it. He was there for a little while, chilling. And then mom was like, get off of me. Get off me, bro. He's just chilling. And then the two baby monkeys got in a tussle. They decided that they were going to fight. Little wrestling. Then this was another mom and baby, I think. Yeah. The baby came up and hung out for a bit. Got some photos of them. Um, oh, this was on the way there. So this was weird. And I wish there was a, there was a part of me that was like, 
I should take a picture with these girls because they're apparently famous. So we we were we got the the green what was it the green car, which is like um, I think it's it's not like a the fancy car, but you pay a little bit more. Uh, it's assigned seating, so it's not like first come first serve, and um, you know it, it's pretty nice. But we were we we got on pretty early, and then these three or four. Uh, women got on, but behind them was like an entourage of like seven guys just like doing everything for him. Like, oh, let me take your luggage. Let me blah, blah, blah. Take a picture of you here. And then uh, while we were on the train, multiple people came over to take pictures with them. And then they actually did an interview on the train with a guy that had like a camera and like a boom, like boom microphone. They did an interview and all of this is literally happening right next to me. And I texted my brother. I'm like, you think they're like idols or something? <laughs> I'm like, we have no fucking clue who they are. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I should have taken a picture with them just so that I could like Google Lens or something to figure out who they were. <laughs> should be like, hey, can we get a picture? <laughs> but yeah, I, I have no freaking clue who they were. But yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, the uh, the seats had. Um, uh, footrests and you can see here if you're reading there's a little reading light there too it's pretty legit the uh the speed trains are really really um really really good diorama kyoto you get tickets from there and it gives you 30 minute to 45 minute train ride for tourists to see mountains and rivers oh i will i'll have to write that down that's cool thank you for letting me know diorama kyoto that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. It, it's a it's a really nice. I think it's like a hundred hundred thirty dollars or something for a ticket. Uh, that's not a round, or was it a round trip? I think it was like two hundred some dollars round trip. So like two hundred fifty dollars round trip or something. Um, round trip Kyoto and back. But it's comfy, man. It's a it's a nice, and it's only two. I think if you were to drive this, it's like six or seven hours. But if you go on the bullet train, it's like two hours or like two hours and 25 minutes or something like that. It's like super fast. So, and on the way there, uh, Mount Fuji was not visible. On the way back, Mount Fuji was very visible. It was really cool. So yeah, he's all, he's all reclined back, looking comfy. All right, so when we first got to Kyoto, this was our lunch. We got to Kyoto. Uh, underneath Kyoto Tower, they call it, I think they call it the Kyoto Tower Sando, I think. Um, it's like a little, almost like a cafeteria sort of food courtish vibe, but it has all these different restaurants that you can get food from. So we got uh, some tempura, some pork, over some rice with some um, udon, and it was like great because it was it was a little cold that day when we got there so the udon was fantastic and then yeah the the bowl was great with the shrimp and the pork it was good stuff um so we refueled this was before we went and saw the monkeys so we we refueled on this and then we went and saw the monkeys my brother had to take a picture of seattle's best coffee because he's from seattle he, he chuckled when he saw that they had Seattle's Best in uh, Kyoto. This was... This was our Airbnb in Kyoto. Pretty sure. Yeah, this was our Airbnb in Kyoto. Very nice place. All right, this is Arashiyama. So, one thing I like about Arashiyama is it... It's really close to Kyoto, but I feel like it's kind of on the outskirt of Kyoto. So it's much more like nature. Uh, there's much more nature. There's more mountains. There's the river that runs through. There's the cool bridges. There's like there's so much more wildernessy things happening than in the other parts of um, Kyoto. Or at least you know I you could probably find other outskirts of Kyoto that are very similar. But uh, this one's just really nice to me. I don't know. It it's really cool. So you have this river that runs through. It must be dammed like somewhere over here by the bridge. And then uh, 
you have this bridge that goes across. That's like the main bridge. This was a restaurant or cafe or something that my brother took a picture of. This was crossing the bridge, I believe, to the other side. Kind of where uh, you get to, like, the monkey park. Yep, because on the other side you had this with all the boats and stuff. So this was the this is the view from the monkey park. So if you if you do go up the mountain to hang out with the monkeys, this is the view you have. It's it's freaking awesome. There's so many good views in different places of Kyoto. There was another one that my uh, my friend said to Mount Hiai. Is that what it's called? Mount Mount High Mount Hiai. Uh, that is apparently a nice like hour long hike that has one of the best views of Kyoto. But from Kiyomizudera. That has a really nice view. This has a really nice view from the Monkey Park. Like, there's so many great views that you can get of different parts of Kyoto. Um, but yeah, you're pretty high up at the Monkey Park. There's my brother. He had this fixation for some reason on you have to have your feet in the photo. I think his girlfriend told him like that to get a good photo, it has to be vertical and you have to get the feet of the person in the photo. I don't know where this comes from. It's that, if that's like an Instagram thing, but like that is not at all <laughs> what I, you know, like he was so worried about getting his feet in the photo. <laughs> I was like, okay, man. I mean, I, I, I'll get your feet in the photo, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know if that's like an Instagram thing or what, but it was funny. He was particular. Gotta show off the whole fit. Yeah, right, exactly. Feeding the monkeys again. Video of me doing it. Should I just put the little food there and they put their little hand through and they grab it? Um, so I was keeping this one busy and there was a girl next to me feeding the baby. Cause I was like I was like, alright, if you're just gonna if you're just gonna just give the food to the baby. I'm going to try not to create a problem here and I'm just going to feed the parent that's next to it or else there's going to be, there's going to be a freaking issue because they are, they're pretty brutal with the, with the babies, man. They, uh, they do not give a shit that they are children. They, they will get the food first. More monkeys. Lots of monkeys on top of the building. Probably because it was kind of a cold day, I would assume the sun on top of that building probably was very warm for them. <laughs> so those ones aren't aggressive towards humans. Like they don't, as far as I'm aware, I, I've been up there a couple times now and they don't seem, they don't like grab phones. They don't grab like earbuds out of ears. They don't do that. As far as I'm aware, they might. Um, they, they haven't done it to me and I haven't seen anyone have that happen, but I have seen the videos you're talking about where the monkeys will like, you know, go up and steal a phone and run off with it. Or they'll grab like a, like a AirPod out of someone's ear and run off with it or something like that. It's like, oh man, luckily that has not happened to me. Um, there are attendants up there that are pretty good about keeping the monkeys like off of people or like away from people, which is good. <clears throat> not that they will, you know, want to get on you in the first place. I don't know what this place is, to be honest. Oh, this is coming down from the monkey park, I think. So this is uh, Rashiyama. This is the, when you're going over the bridge, this is the river that goes back. A lot of, like, older architecture buildings. And this, I think, might be what, um, what the, uh, person in chat is talking about with the train that might go back here i've wanted to do like a boat tour that goes back into here because it just looks really cool like the river goes all the way back and like splits between splits between the mountains back there it just looks like it would be really interesting but yeah if a train if you could do a train and it's got great views and stuff i would definitely do that that seems cool another good photo I forgot what these things are called. There, there's much better looking ones than uh, what we got, but I got a red bean one, and I think my brother got a custard one. It's supposed to look like a fish. This one's kind of garbo, um, but I forget what they're called, but they're really good. 
they're they're really tasty you can get different fillings the red bean the red bean is uh something it's good i would highly recommend you guys try it. it's 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 red bean but it's almost chocolatey it's a little weird because you get a bean every now and again like a like a pretty solid bean in it <laughs> um but it's uh it's good i like the red bean stuff um the custard filled ones are obviously amazing too for sure back to the bamboo forest this was just a shop, I think, in Arashiyama. This is a bell at... Okay, so we were walking back from the bamboo forest. We were walking kind of back toward Arashiyama. Uh, and this was like a big temple uh, on our way back that we walked through. And I think it had actually one bloomed cherry, bro cherry blossom tree over here. <laughs> right there. That was probably the most like full bloom cherry blossom tree that we saw the entire time that we were there. <laughs> um, cause it was so cold that I think it, it kept them from blooming. So we really didn't get full bloom when we were there. We really didn't get like a start of a bloom even when we were there in some of the places that are just like full of them when they're, when they're all going crazy. But yeah, that's a nice photo with the blossoms in the pagoda. This is a statue. All right. So this is a ramen place. We went to a ramen place that night for dinner and we got ramen and karage, which is basically fried chicken, Japanese fried chicken. And it was really good. I forget what this place was called. We also got a sake flight. Uh, so we shared a sake flight, which was good as well. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, so ramen, fried chicken. And then we had matcha ice cream afterward for dessert i would say that we kind of got forgotten about in terms of um uh the wait staff because this wasn't a play well we probably should have just called them over because th i feel like that's kind of more customary over there it's like you either have a button that like dings them when you need them or you just kind of like call them over and, and ask for stuff um but we actually met a few other people at this table so it was like a communal table there was eight seats, I think, so everyone was sitting around it. We actually met some other tourists and stuff that were going around. We went to the Kyoto Pokemon Center, so this is Lugia. There's also Ho-Oh in there. It's kind of like the Gen 2 Pokemon Center. A lot of the stuff in there is is Gen 2, because I think Gen 2 is kind of based off Kyoto, right? Um, isn't Ikriti, is it Ikriti Town that's sort of kind of based off Kyoto? Uh... I don't know. I could be making that up, but it's a very Gen 2 heavy Pokemon Center, the one in Kyoto, but it's really cool. You got a nice ho, -Ho statue, a nice um, Lugia statue. Then you have a Pikachu statue that's in like a Japanese dress, which is cool. So it's, it's a cool, cool spot. Okay. This is my picture of the ramen because my brother can't take good pictures of food. Apparently um, the fried chicken was freaking awesome. The ramen was fine it was good um but the fried chicken was crazy that went so hard um very tasty and then obviously the matcha ice cream was very delicious as well all right <laughs> kyoto day Two. I'm going to try to go through these a little bit faster. Uh, Kiyomizu Dera. So we got up early in the morning. And we went to my favorite shrine temple in Kyoto. And one of the bigger touristy ones, I think, in Kyoto. Because of how awesome it is. I think I read somewhere that it was it was a runner-up for like a... Um, what do they call that? Like... Uh, a wonder of the world essentially uh it was a runner up to that and i can i 100 agree i mean i think this place is amazing uh, it's definitely a must see if you're in kyoto I, I think personally so we did get i don't know if those are cherry blossoms or plum blossoms or whatever they are uh but yeah this place is just beautiful look at that cool freaking dragon statue man that is so sick i love this statue so 
He's I think he's like a guardian or something of the So we've got some some bloomage. There's just so much going on at this place. This is one of the views that you get. That's Kyoto Tower there. And that's a lot of Kyoto. Osaka greater than Kyoto? I've never been to Osaka, so I don't know. But it, it would be hard to beat. I think Kyoto's... I mean, I've only been to Kyoto and Osaka. Or Tokyo and Kyoto. Um, I don't know. It would be hard to beat. I really love Kyoto. I think it's a amazing city. I did a vlog on my channel about Kyoto or the things I like about Kyoto when I went last year. Definitely check that out if you haven't yet. It's a very cool, uh, very cool blog or vlog. Just a really beautiful view from here. It's funny because I'll like I'll like take my pictures back or whatever, and you know I'll I'll crop them or doctor them a little bit, and then then my my family will be like, oh, the you know your pictures are so amazing, oh my god, you're so talented, and I'm just like, you literally can't take a bad picture of this shit. Like it is so beautiful and crazy and gorgeous. Like there is no bad picture. You can't call my, you can't say that I have some like natural gift of photography when the shit that I'm taking a picture of, like you can't take a bad picture of it. There's no bad angle of it. Like it's all incredible. It's all amazing. So this is cool. So this is a part of the temple where there's running water in three streams. And if I remember correctly, I think it's studies, love life, and work maybe something like that um and i think you go up and you you drink out of one of them one of the streams and that's supposed to give you like better luck in that area so if you wanted to get you know a better love life you could um you know drink out of that one but you can only drink out of one maybe two you can't drink out of three or else you're just greedy and you'll have bad luck so, you can only drink out of one. Um, we didn't drink out of any, but <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, better Japanese beer, Sashi or Sapporo? I like Sapporo better, personally, but uh, Asashi, uh, Asashi, I think it's, no. What, what is it? God damn it. Is it Asahi? Asahi. Asahi. Uh, Asahi. Uh, is very good as well. But I think I like Sapporo better, personally. Will the 151 Japanese reprint be the biggest reprint in the history of Pokemon? Uh, probably not. I hope so, but probably not. Alright, you can't go to Japan without talking about the 7-Eleven. This might be Family Mart. Is this Family Mart or 7-Eleven? Can't tell. It's a convenience store. Um... They have the best freaking, like, I don't know how many, how many of the 7-Eleven little donuts I had <laughs> when we were there. But, like, every morning we'd go to the 7-Eleven for coffee and we'd get, like, a donut or, like, a melon pan or something. Because, like, it's just so good. We just always try something different that looked, you know, amazing from the 7-Eleven. Um, did you say how much you paid for plane tickets? My tickets, I think my tickets to my Japan tickets were like two grand. Um, I think it was like two thousand dollars. It was way more expensive than my last two trips. I think my last two trips were like fifteen hundred and fourteen hundred or something like that. This one was two grand, and I don't know if that was because it was spring or if the tickets are just going up, uh, which is very possible. But yeah, two grand is not cheap for play tickets. That's pretty brutal. Back to Kimizudera. These are my brother's photos, probably. It's funny. I feel like he uh, 
he copies a lot of my photos. <laughs> or we just see the same things. Yeah, we, there's a lot of the Pikachu banana stuff everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's a Pikachu banana uh, box that you could buy. Yeah, we did see quite a few of those. We didn't try them, but we did see them. Um, very nice view from Kimi Zadera. Again, highly recommend. If you guys go anywhere in Kyoto, I recommend this place. Kyumi Zudera is the place you should go. If you go, if you're if you're in Kyoto for like two hours and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, do that. <laughs> That's the priority, in my opinion, is Kyumi Zudera. I just don't like my feet in photos. I do I do not like this trend. I, I want to crop this right now. I hate it. Don't put my feet in photos. I just look short. How to look short. Take a photo with your feet in it. <laughs> uh, I guess no one's next to me to make me look real short. This is cool. Kind of a hidden one back in the back in the mountain. Man, look at that building. Oh, it's so cool. I think I read somewhere that um, the original structure, I don't know if this is still the original structure. I'm not, I don't think it is. I think there's been renovations, but the original structure of this, I don't know if it looks similar or not. Hopefully, uh, they didn't use a single nail. I think that's what I read. If you can trust Wikipedia, I think the original <laughs> structure of this, they didn't use a single nail to, uh, to create it. I'm pretty sure I saw nails when I was there because I looked for it the second time because I was like but yeah I think the I think the original structure they didn't use any nails it's wild I hate it take my feet out I don't like this trend that's a good photo right there No, I think they I think they used like uh they cut the wood in a way where it like slatted together and then um you can kind of see like in the rafters of the different buildings like the I'll I'll try and point it out if we got a photo of them but I think they just cut things in a way where it where it all like puzzle piece kind of slatted together in different ways that made it a, like a sound structure um yeah this is crazy do 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 do, do. Oh yeah, that's the, I told my brother, I said, I said, sit on the step. I got a cool photo idea. And he said, I don't want to sit. I was like, okay, well just stand there then. And then I took, I took the same photo that I would have taken if he was sitting, but I thought the photo would have been cool if he was sitting, but I think it came out cool when he was standing. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like Lincoln logs. Yeah. Okay, so that morning after we went to that uh, temple, I got a recommendation from a buddy. His name is Ernie. He's in the chat a lot. He recommended we go to this place for breakfast called O Cafe for a breakfast sandwich that he said was the best breakfast sandwich of all time. Now, in my opinion, the best breakfast sandwich of all time is the McGriddle from McDonald's. You can't beat it. It is the best. It is the best breakfast sandwich of all time. I will say that this was very good. So, one thing that I really liked about this: so you got that giant fluffy egg in between the two pancakes, basically. And what I liked is that you had these sauces here. So you had a mustard sauce and a honey sauce, and uh, you kind of like you know, use your knife or whatever to kind of scoop up some of the sauce, put it on your next bite. It was really good. It was very, it was just a really good experience. The The sandwich was very good. The coffee was very good. Um, better than a McGriddle? Mm, no, <laughs> but it was very good. And I would recommend go to O Cafe. It's actually kind of cool. It's, it's like, 
you you can't even see it from the road when you're on the road there's like a little sign and then you walk like back into an alleyway and then the little cafe is there there's me with my gigantic egg sandwich Oh, this is a uh, cafe mocha that I got. This was just like a, um, it wasn't the actual latte art. It was like a, it was like a film, like a sugar uh, film thing that they put on top of it. But it was cool. Oh yeah, so this you kind of walked back in this alley and then you saw um, this guy's little cafe. And he is his brand, man. Like, everything. Like, all of his merch has him on it. His sign has him on it. Like, everything is a silhouette of him. It's actually kind of funny. Um, he He's definitely uh, a bit of a character. But he's, he seemed like a nice enough guy. Oh, man. Here we go. All right. I don't know if we're going to skip around or not. But this is... Oh, which market is that? It's the big market in Kyoto. Kyoto, oh, I forget what it's called. Kyoto Market. Nishiki. So this is Nishiki Market. Um, it's basically, I don't know how many blocks long it is. It's super, it's like really big. But on each side of the market is just street food. Just street food vendors. And so we went to uh, Nishiki Market. We walked either side. This was a, a bakery that we went, or I think it was right towards the entrance where we kind of entered the market. This was a bakery. And my brother is like, when he sees carbs, he's just like, oh! <laughs> he just like freaks out and gets tunnel vision. So he's like, oh no, we'll come back. Cause we had just eaten those breakfast sandwiches, I think. So he's like, oh no, we'll come back to the bakery when we've seen it all. And I'm like, all right. So we didn't we didn't have anything at the bakery right away, but we did come back to get some stuff. And one of my favorite things that I had in Japan was at this bakery. And I'll show you whenever it pops up. But look at all the good they even have pizza. They have all this amazing, like freshly baked stuff. Oh, it's so crazy. So yeah, this is Nishiki Market. It's got a cool, like, um colorful panel glass at the top. And there's no, uh, there's no cars or bikes or anything that go through Nishiki Market. It's, it's just people. It's just walkable. And it's blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks. It just goes forever. <coughs> but it's full of restaurants and street food and all sorts of cool stuff. You do have to watch out, though, because people do cross on these, uh, on these streets. <laughs> so you do have to watch out when you're crossing. Okay, so we'll come back to Nishiki Market, but this is the Nintendo store. So apparently in Kyoto, they put up a new Nintendo store. And we went and checked that out and I actually got a couple things. But they have this gigantic Mario coming out of the pipe when you walk in. It's kind of a cool thing. Oh, so this is a bag that I bought. So I actually bought this tote bag that I uh, am taking my um, uh, shipments out to the USPS with. So on the other side, it says a link to the past and it has link like uh, attacking one of the chickens. And then on the back side, it has all the chickens attacking link from a link to the past. And on the front, it has his uh, his hearts are uh, like two hearts or two and a half hearts or something. And on the back, it's zero. So, yeah, it's just a cute little uh, tote bag that I'm bringing my shipments to the post office in now. Definitely needed one at some point. I've, I've got enough now that I can't really like juggle them all. I mean, I can, but... It's a bit of a pain. Uh, my brother got his girlfriend a Yoshi plush. Because she likes plushies. Nintendo Kyoto. This was something that was on the roof. They have this little thing set up that you can take pictures of. Okay, so this is back in Nishiki Market. I forget. My brother called this an Onigiri. And I was like, I don't know if that's an Onigiri or not. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like that's what they said it's an onigiri i'm like okay it's not like the typical like triangle shaped onigiri but this was uh, i think this was eel unagi um unagi rice in uh wrapped in seaweed okay these things almost sent me to the freaking hospital okay so this is
uh, takoyaki. I wanted to make sure I had it right. This is takoyaki. And basically, it's like a batter. They put pieces of squid in the middle, and then they top it with different things, right? And they're cooked in uh, balls, essentially. So you got squid inside them. It's a batter wrapped around it, and then usually they're topped with different things. So this is uh, takoyaki balls topped with um, tempura pieces in like a spicy sauce. Uh, one thing you should not do when you're eating takoyaki is right when they serve it to you, you should not grab one and just shove it in your mouth. Because <laughs> that's what I did. I made the foolish mistake of grabbing an entire takoyaki ball right when it was served to me, shoving it in my mouth and biting down, and it was just molten hot lava coming out of it. It was so freaking hot. My entire mouth was burned. I don't know what degree burn I had in my mouth for the rest of the trip. It was bad. It was really bad. Um, but I didn't want to spit it out because we're standing literally right in front of all the people that have made them. So I don't want to spit them out. But my my I was literally like, I, I cannot explain this to you. There were parts of my mouth that were just like, that were blistered. Like the, the in, like entire parts of my mouth that were blistered. It was peeling. It was horrible. Um, do not take a takoyaki ball and shove it right in your mouth. <laughs> Definitely open it up a little bit or do something to it to make it not as hot. Because holy shit, that was that was brutal. Um, and it almost ruined my mouth for the entire rest of the trip. But it was delicious. It was very, very good. It was very tasty. It just was freaking molten lava. Okay, so I don't even know what these things are. I think it's like an Earl Grey muffin or whatever, and that's some kind of like chocolate something. This was what this was one of, if not the best piece of food that I had in Japan. It is a cornbread. It is a maple bacon cornbread muffin. Holy shit! It was so good. I love cornbread. And I never thought that adding maple and bacon to cornbread would be revolutionary. But this was one of, this was, this might have been the single best thing that I ate in Japan. It was freaking incredible, man. It was so good. It was tasty as hell. Um, highly recommend maple bacon cornbread. Oh, Jesus. I guess it's called City Bakery, maybe, in Kyoto. Whew. Amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right, these are the same photos. It's the bakery again. Nintendo. Oh, this is my... <laughs> this is so... It's kind of ominous looking, isn't it? That's kind of cool. Basically, I did a... Uh... What do they call them things where it's a it's a big uh, a panorama panorama photo? Um, so this was one sidewalk to the other and everything in between, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool because it seems bright on the edges, but when you get to like the actual city and stuff, it's all like dark and it looks like it's storming or something over there. That's kind of interesting. That's cool. Okay, so crane games. Crane games are super popular in Japan. Everywhere you go in every arcade, there's going to be floors. The first floor and the second floor are probably all going to be crane games. It's a super popular thing in Japan. And I've never won anything in a crane game before. I've tried in the past, and I have not won anything. A little kid, I don't know how much the kid spent... But I've been looking for this Umbreon the entire time because we kept seeing Pokemon stuff and I kept seeing like Eevee, Vaporeon and stuff. And I'm like, man, if there's an Umbreon, I'm going to try it. This little kid was there. I don't know how much money he spent, but he went like five or six, seven goes when, when we actually showed up. He couldn't get it. And then he left with his mom. He's like, oh, you know, give me more money. And mom was like, no, no more money. We got to go. And then it was my turn. And I stepped up to the plate. And I think it took me like, 15 bucks 
I think it was like 15 bucks to get them. But I got them. Uh, and we actually went to Don Quixote uh, later on in the trip. And a very similar plush to this was selling for like 30 some dollars at Don Quixote. So I was like, yeah, 15 bucks for a 30 some dollar plushie. Let's go. I don't know if that's actually what they are. They're probably, they're probably like $9 online or something. But uh, yeah, I'd never won anything in a crane game before. That was my first win. A little uh, Umbreon plushie. Very cool. All right. Kyoto day. What are we on? Day three? Yeah. All right. So that's Kyoto Tower. Um underneath kyoto tower is that restaurant or the cafeteria place that i was talking about that has good food so we went to let me make sure that i get it right sometimes i get it wrong is it is it food wait fushimi inari sometimes i say food no i think i always get it right fushimi inari so the inari shrine the fushimi inari shrine is the um is the one that has all the gates. It's like thousands of Tori gates that you walk through all the way up the mountain. And so this is kind of the intro to this. There's this big Tori gate at the front, which is really impressive. It's it's massive. Um, and then you get like, look at this. You get the nice mountains in the background. You got multiple Tori gates as you walk up. Very cool. I really like this particular uh, temple experience. I think it's really nice. This one has a lot more of the orange. I think that, I don't know if that's a Fushimi, if it's Fushimi uh, shrines that all have like the orange or if it's just, I forget. Cause there are temples that are much more orange than other ones that are much more brown. But I, for, I forget the difference between them. So basically in this temple you walk you walk up and then you keep you keep kind of walking through and it leads you through and then you walk all the way up the mountain and you come all the way back down. Unfortunately, it was super windy the couple days before. And apparently, they had some trees that were downed on the path. So they actually closed part of the path. So we couldn't go all the way up. We could only go partially up, which really sucked because I don't know. I really think it's cool. So it would have been nice for my brother to be able to see the entire the entire thing. But you did get to see a lot of the gates still. So yeah, it's just this all the way up the mountain, basically. You're just walking under thousands of gates up the mountain. I think there's 10,000 gates. Maybe. It's a lot. They get smaller and they get like closer together as you go. <clears throat> it's just a cool... Uh, Cool experience. One thing I will say when you go, if you go, if you're at the start of this, the start is where everyone stops to take a photo. Uh, first of all, don't be afraid to just walk right through them. <laughs> the first time that I went, I was like, all right, I'm going to wait for these people to finish their photos and you, you will sit there forever. Okay. So don't be afraid to just walk right through them because they should know that they are blocking like the entrance to this path. So just walk right past them uh, because there's going to be people dressed in like the traditional wear, um, hiring photographers to take photos and stuff like that. Just w just walk right past them. Don't don't, don't even worry about it. Uh, it's not rude. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's kind of annoying because everyone's constantly taking photos. So it's like, oh, am I... Do I try to get out of the photo? Do I just walk past? Do I? But then there was some that were like, you obviously could tell were like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to bash on influencers because I'm kind of like, I'm, you know, I do YouTube stuff, obviously. But like, there was one lady that was at the top of as far as we could go, who was sitting in front of the gates. And I swear to God, if you're a boyfriend or a husband nowadays, you better be a, prof a professional fucking pr photographer <laughs> because God damn, uh, this guy was like, she was doing all the different poses and everything, trying to look like a model or whatever. And he was trying to take all these different pictures and then she'd look and be like, no, nah, those look bad. Take, take other ones, man. You better be a professional photographer if you're going to date someone nowadays or else you're just, you're just boned. Take a photography class. It's probably the most... <laughs> It's probably the most uh, impressive thing you could tell a girl right now. 
I took a photography class in uh, 2024. I'll take all your Instagram photos. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, you got all the gates. This thing was good. There was, um, suddenly I'm glad I took a photography class in high school. There you go. That's your marketable skill for the dating market. Um, but yeah, this was really good. So we went, uh, when we figured out we couldn't go any further up the, the, uh, shrine temple area, we came back down and there were morning stalls that were just opening up. And this was a, uh, obviously it has sesame seeds. I think it's wrapped in pork with rice in the middle. Oh my God. It was so good. It was so tasty. Um, that was very good. I forget if it had a special name or anything to it, but this was, oh man, it's the temple that is right next to the Kyoto station. It's like blocks from the station. It's a very cool one though, because you get to walk around like actually in the temple um, or around the different, I forget what it's called. It's a really cool spot though. And it's right next to the it's basically like a kind of a first impression temple to Kyoto because you're most likely going to walk past it or drive past it if you're going to like an Airbnb. It's a really cool place. I, I recommend just walking through it. It's big too. It's real big. This is kind of cool. So at most of the temples, when you walk in, you don't have to, especially if you're a foreigner. But I think if you're like practicing and you're um, you're like praying there, um, you will wash your hands in a particular. I don't know if you wash your hands in a particular. I think you do. I think you will wa you wash one of your hands first and then you wash your other hand. And then I think you put some water in your mouth and then um, I don't know. I don't know if you spit it out or not. There, there's like a there's a procedure to it basically. If you if you want to be like um, a non tourist and you want to actually do the you want to actually participate in it, but uh, you basically like cleanse your hands and your mouth as you walk into the um, temples. Now is this the castle? This might be Nijo Castle. Yeah, I think it is. This is Nijo Castle. So Nijo Castle is really awesome. You can't take any photos when you go inside and you have to take your shoes off when you go inside. Um, but you get to walk through, you get to see all the different, like walking through Nijo Castle and then seeing, um, watching Shogun right now is like super crazy <laughs> because I feel like I've seen all of these, like all these sets that they're shooting the show on. It's like, oh, I've seen, uh, you know, something like that. I've seen, you know, the, the, um, uh, you know the whatever's I, I don't know it's super cool because it, it's super recognizable now that i've actually seen inside of like a proper castle before and then there's gardens outside the castle when you uh kind of walk around it different little waterfalls and stuff it's kind of weird i haven't i haven't been to a lot of castles i've been to edinburgh castle uh, that's the only other castle I feel like I've been to. And then I've been to some castles in Japan, but I feel like all the castles I've been to in Japan actually have a moat. <laughs> like, like I feel like it's just, it just in the cartoons when you're like, Oh, uh, we got to build a moat for our castle. We got to fill it with alligators. We got to do all this stuff. And then it's like, yeah, uh, maybe not the alligator part, but the castles literally had a moat. <laughs> like they all have a moat. Um, it was an actual thing. I don't know why that's surprising to me, but it's like, yep, true that. They actually did that. Some cherry blossoms. All right, so this was good. We stopped at a gyoza restaurant, and it was funny. My brother was like, I don't know what to order. And I'm like, just order one of everything. <laughs> So we tried, there was like the regular gyoza, there was the extra stuffed gyoza, there was the crispy gyoza, and then there was soup, soup dumplings. Oh my God. And then we just got two beers. Uh, that was, that was a good lunch. That was a good lunch. We got some edamame. Uh, yeah, that was super tasty. So we just tried all these different things. And, um, the, 
yeah, I don't know. It was delicious. It was very good. If I see them on the menu, I have to get it. Yeah, these were very good. And we tried all the different ones. Actually, the soup dumplings are probably my favorite. And then maybe the regular ones and then the crispy ones. I would have thought it would have been the other way. But the soup dumplings were super like. And they weren't soup dumplings like. Like, uh, are they called? Oh, my God. I hate. I need to like fact check my. Xiao Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, uh, Xiao Long Bao's? No, those aren't soup dumplings. What am I thinking of? You know what I'm talking about, where the soup is like actually in inside the dumpling? This was like a dumpling in like a soup. So they were like wet dumpling, not, uh, not like soup filled dumplings, if that makes sense. But yeah, this was really good. We just got some beers, ate some gyoza. It's good stuff. This is the Imperial Palace? Yes. This is the uh, Kyoto Imperial Palace. The gardens were probably the most impressive part of the palace, in my opinion. Like this garden side in the back was really gorgeous. It almost looked like it was out of like a Lord of the Rings film. Like you could see, you could see like a Lord of the Rings scene taking place here. Like, look at this. Doesn't look like, doesn't this look like Hobbiton or something like that with like the, I don't know. There's something, there's something about this that looks very like Lord of the Rings to me for some reason. But yeah, super cool. Okay. So this was a recommendation from Nick, uh, Oh, what's his name in chat? Oh, uh, Ibex. Ibex in Discord, Moments with Nick in chat. This was a, another tonkatsu restaurant. So kind of the similar stuff. You get the cabbage salad. You get the uh, tonkatsu sauce. You get the rice and miso soup. And this time you actually made your own sauce. So it was kind of fun. They brought out the sesame seeds like in a bowl. And then they were like, oh, pour it. You know, pour your different sauces. They had little instructions, and then you you ground it all up yourself and everything. So it was an interesting experience. This one was very good still. I would not say it was as good as the Donkey Tonkatsu in Tokyo, but this was very, very good still. It was very delicious. All right. These are my photos now, I think. Got that cool Hobbit bridge. This is my meal from that night, so... You got the sauce. I got a, another shrimp and then some uh, pork. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Kyoto Day 3? Is that what we're on? Nope. I think we're on Tokyo Day 3. Tokyo Day 3. So this was another, this was another experience. So my brother got pancakes. Um, we, we went to a place that I remembered having the, the real thick souffle pancakes before, and they weren't as thick as they were before. So they might've changed the recipe, but this was another situation where I said, I'll have the same. And then they just brought out his thinking that we were going to share. So I did not get breakfast that morning, uh, or I actually got breakfast someplace else. I didn't want to, I didn't want to make a deal out of it. So we just stopped at a different place and got something fast. But yeah, he got some pancakes that looked pretty good. This was Fuji on the way back. So Fuji was not visible on the way there. Totally visible on the way back. Like it was awesome. Very easy to see. I, even when I go to Seattle and I see mountains like this, like the snow capped mountains, uh, they just seem fake. They seem like they were just like painted in the sky, like someone green screened them in, you know, like they're so far away. They just don't look real. Like, how can that thing be real? How can that thing be that big? It just it feels weird, sort of. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's like a it's like a weird, ominous thing. Like, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it should be real. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Probably because I just haven't like grown up around them. So this is the Shinjuku Gion, I think, 
Shinjuku Gion uh, Park. Uh, we went to see hopefully some cherry blossoms, and there very there there wasn't really many. <laughs> and every cherry blossom tree that did have blossoms was just surrounded by people. But it was still a really nice park. I mean, it's still really beautiful, and it was really close to our Airbnb. A lot of people went there in um, the traditional dress to take photos with the cherry blossoms. But there wasn't really that many cherry blossoms, so. All right. Now we got some Japanese curry. So this is a uh, Koko Ichiban. It is a massive chain in Japan, but I think it has amazing Japanese curry. Like it, it 100% beats any Japanese curry that I've had in America. And, and literally this, and we'll see what I had. It was like $7 or something. It's extremely cheap. Uh, but it was, it's so good, dude. It's so good. So this is Shinjuku. This is Golden Guy. So Golden Guy is like, I forget how many blocks it is. It might be like five blocks, a uh, bunch of alleyways, but these are all bars. Like everywhere you look is a bar. It's, it's a, it's a huge party place, um, with bars all the way down all, you know, all the blocks just full of bars. And I think, you know, it, it's a it's a popular touristy party place in Tokyo. And we actually stayed pretty close to it. And we had sirens going all night, man. All night. But if you were, like, in your 20s and still partying, you know, into the wee hours of the night, this would be a really fun place to go, I think. Not for me, though. I'm too old for that shit. All right, so... Shinjuku has the, uh, I think it's the Toho Cinema. And on top of the Toho Cinema is Godzilla. <laughs> and they do like a, I don't know how many times per day they do it, but there's like a little thing with Godzilla. It's got like lights, everything lights up. His, I forget if he moves or not, but his eyes turn red. And they have him like, you know, shooting stuff out of his mouth. It's really interesting. And this was inside of the mall. There's a mall, um, Kabuchi, Kabuki, Kabuki Cho, right? Yeah, Kabuki Cho uh, Tower, next to kind of where Godzilla was. There's a mall um, inside there. Oh, here's uh, King Kong next to all the uh, ladies. There's lots of like. Uh, the picture, the poster before that's, oh, this, gotcha, okay, cool, um, yeah, this is the coin purse I got, so this is actually on the way back from Kyoto that I got this, and I got this for the train, it was like a red bean, uh, red bean, um, pancake, thing with a onigiri tuna mayo onigiri very good here are my pictures from that day here's my curry so i got some a uh, couple of hot dogs um crispy chicken with the curry and the rice oh so good it's so good okay so this is the kabuki cho tower <laughs> the first floor um, and the second floor was that arcade that we saw earlier, but this is on the first floor, which is, I mean, that's really cool. And, you know, when they have like live music and stuff, that'd probably be really fun in there. So outside of the tower, they were having a concert and this was wicked. So the, the lady's actually right here singing live on stage, but then they had this projected on the wall of the tower so that if you were like if you couldn't get close enough to the stage you could watch it above like and it's all outside it's not like an indoor thing it's all outside um i thought that was really wicked and actually she was really good i don't know who she is but she was actually really like the music was actually really good um now we have tokyo day four so the last folder perfect timing 
So we ate at a restaurant uh, for breakfast. I think it's a Korean restaurant or maybe started in the U.S., got popular in Korea. But it's called Egg Slut. And it is a, uh, I don't know if it's just breakfast sandwiches, but they do breakfast sandwiches. So my brother actually took a picture of his. This place was hopping, man. This place was so busy. Um, we had to sit like apart from each other. So he, he got to sit at the window and I had to sit at like a table, like, you know, someplace else. <laughs> it was raining and cold that day. Oh, it's brutal. But uh, the egg sandwich was very good. I would highly recommend. I thought it was awesome. I don't know what this is. Uh, my brother's just taking photos, apparently. This is a giant whale. I wonder, he... Okay, so we separated from each other. So he went to the Tokyo... I think it's called the Tokyo National Museum. And I went to some Pokemon card shops. So this was, this was the day we kind of separated. And he went to go check out something he was interested in. And I went to check out some, some cards. Um... So these are all his photos from the museum. I even I haven't even seen them yet, but these all look really cool. Some statues, some different artifacts. Oh, that's a wicked looking table. Oh, is that a perch for a bird? I wonder. Might be. Something, I don't know. Cool cabinet. Oh, some samurai armor. That's sick. Oh, a samurai sword. Another samurai sword. A blade. That's crazy. Very cool. Three kinds of sword fittings with scenes of the Genpei War. Edo period, 17th century. Isn't that like the 1600s? Jeez. That's one thing about America is our country is relatively young, you know? Like, we don't have history from before the founding of our country, which is, like, not that old. <laughs> we don't have anything from, like, the 15, 1600s. We didn't have, like, a Edo period well, I guess we probably have some, like, Native American artifacts that might go back that far, but. That's cool. Some traditional dress. Painting. Oh, that's some cool samurai armor. That's pretty sick. Another cool one. Look at the horns on that one. That's cool. That's a wicked looking helmet. Very cool. Man, some of this stuff is so intricate. For as old as it is. Couple of cool screens. Some tea stuff or samurai armor samurai swords more samurai armor <laughs> so much samurai stuff some more screens yeah that's cool some traditional dress it's like a transport carriage. Probably carried... Pro honestly, probably carried by people, I would assume. <laughs> Alright. That was cool. But I gotta talk about this. Shogun Burger. I was told, I was led to believe by someone on Instagram that Shogun Burger was like Shake Shack, but better. Okay? That's what I was led to believe. Shake Shack is the best fast food burger out there, period, bar none. Best fast food fries out there, period, bar none. So when someone said that it is the best burger, better than Shake Shack, I said, we're going to have to try and find out. 
And I will say, it was not better than Shake Shack. It was good. Definitely not better than Shake Shack. Shake Shack has the Shack sauce, baby. That's what makes it, that's what takes it over the top. It's so good. Uh, the the Shake Shack sauce is, it, it just takes it to a different level. Now, Shogun Burger doesn't have a Shogun sauce. It's just a burger. And while it is a very good burger, meh, it was good. It wasn't like blow your mind good, but it was good. And the fries are just normal fries, man. They're not crinkle cut fries like Shake Shack has. Crinkle cut is the superior fry, all right? But it was good. It wasn't bad. It did have melon soda though, so that was definitely better than Shake Shack because I don't think Shake Shack has melon soda. Um, Shogun Burger had melon soda and it was very good, but I would say if you're looking for a burger, very, very good burger. Not as good as Shake Shack. Let's not get it twisted here, all right? But it, it was very good, I would say. It was it was worth it was worth trying. Okay, so this is in the airport on the way back. Uh there was a Pokemon vending machine. And I remember there one being uh there being one in the airport, and I went to the place that I thought it was and it wasn't there anymore. So I was like, oh shit, they better not have gotten rid of the Pokemon vending machine. And uh nope, they just moved it to, to a different terminal, but so yeah, this was in the airport, and I think it had a couple different plushies in it, but you couldn't, there weren't cards, there weren't, uh, it was just a couple plushies. So it was kind of cool, it was like flight attendant Pikachu and stuff like that. Um, so it was it was at least tailored to like the airport. I don't know if you can only get those in the airport or not, if they're like exclusive to the airport, but it was pretty cool to have a little uh, Pokemon vending machine. Uh, is that it? Hold on. That's it. That was my trip, guys. We did so much stuff. I will say I did go to a couple of card shops in Shinjuku. Uh, shops that I had never been before. Actually, I went... That's not true. I didn't go Shinjuku. I did um, uh, Ikebukuro because I wanted to go to Card Secret's new store. So I went to Card Secret's new store. That was cool because they were having some sort of uh, event. I don't know if they were playing Pokemon or which game they were playing but card secrets new store is awesome it's way bigger than their old one uh lots of selection and stuff and then i went to a couple places kind of near card secret in ikebukuro um i didn't buy anything i mean overall it was it was fun to go into the different shops but to be honest like and i said this in discord there's just there's better selection online there's better prices online like i looked at a couple of um i went to card secret and looked at a couple of yeah we're do we just finished up nick actually <laughs> that's all right it's gonna it's gonna be up for people to watch after the fact so you can definitely go back and watch it if you want um but yeah i went to card secret and i you know i was looking at a couple of cards like they had some ponchos and i, and I was like Ooh, some ponchos i don't have that it was like the rayquaza poncho and the and the the one where he's dressed up like a t team skull grunt poncho and i was like well let's take a look at prices and it was like psa 10 prices for the for the raw single and i was like okay <laughs> like i don't think i'll be doing that today uh so yeah i mean some of the prices were up there i i think i've been told by nick in the past that card secret is a little bit more expensive because it's kind of a it's kind of a touristy card shop um but yeah i mean most of the prices i saw were like I, you know, with a with a coupon on Baye, I can get them well cheaper than a lot of the shops that I went. It was still fun to go to the shops and see what they had available and some of the stuff, but yeah. Some of the armor in the museum is from the exact period in which Shogun series takes place, including some of the characters. Yeah, dude, it, like, I mean, they looked really similar, <laughs> to be fair. I, I'm only to the um, third episode in Shogun, but... And I just got to the point where they switched into their armor too. So, um, but yeah, it's been very, very cool so far. I, I really like that show. Like I'm, I'm pretty sucked in. I'll probably watch an episode tonight before I go to bed. Um, but yeah, the trip was super fun. You know, I, uh, I'm glad that I got to actually bring someone and have that experience with somebody else. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, the only thing, and I don't, I don't know the only thing, Nick, 
I said it earlier because I talked about I talked about um, Shogun a little bit earlier. The only thing that kind of frustrates me um, is that the main character's voice feels a little too artificial. Like whenever he talks, I'm like, I'm like, why can't he just talk normal? Like I feel like he's doing like a like he he's he's like trying to make himself more gruff, you know, than his normal voice probably is. But maybe it's not. Maybe his normal voice actually sounds like that. But it his his voice or whatever he whatever he's decided to do with his voice is a little uh a little a little um yeah. It's a it's a little artificial sounding. But it's not bad. It's not taking me out of the show or anything, but Oh, Cosmo. Is that what his name is? Cosmo? Cosmo Jarvis. Yeah. Maybe he just sounds like that. Like if I if I heard him in an interview, maybe he literally just sounds like that. And I'm being a dick. <laughs> maybe I'm being an asshole. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so far it's really good. And man, this guy, I feel like, um, God, who's the super famous Japanese actor uh, that's in that's that's in like Inception? And God, what is his name? Why can't I think of it? I can picture his face. I just can't picture the name. What is his name? Ken Watanabe. Yeah, I feel like Ken Watanabe went like mainstream, became super freaking popular but honestly this uh hiroyuki sonata that guy is a freaking he is so good everything i've seen that guy in he's so amazing but like he hasn't he hasn't become like a like a name like uh ken watanabe you know but yeah this uh hiroyuki sonata that guy is freaking good like everything that he's in is amazing yeah everything i see him in he's fantastic but like yeah He's on a Pokemon card? Oh, yeah, he's on a, um... He was in Detective Pikachu, right? Wasn't he the bad guy? Yeah. Yeah, it's been really good, though. It's been very, very good. Um... That is that dude! I thought it was... Bro, the, 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 um... The chatter between... Oh... What are the two guys? The two pilots in the first three episodes between the main character and the Portuguese pilot guy. The, it's so funny, man. <laughs> the way that they talk to each other is so fucking funny. Oh, man. And it's just great, too, because, you know, nobody understands them. But what they're saying to each other is so fucking vulgar. It is so good. Their, uh, their back and forth is so free. I didn't know it was this guy, though. This, um, he looked familiar, but this Nestor, Nestor Carbonell. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's really good. I've really enjoyed it. I'm gonna watch some more. It's even wilder in the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was talking about that, and then I was talking about the Fallout show. The Fallout show is really good, too. I'm three episodes into that, and I'm like, damn, they did this good. That first episode, the first, like, 20 minutes of the first episode, the intro, shit. <laughs> it's insane. Um, the Fallout show is really good, too. So, yeah, it's been good stuff. We got some good TV right now. Some good adaptations. Which is awesome. Ah. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, um, if you want to watch back through it, we just did two hours. I uh, went through every day, a bunch of photos of everything that we saw, told a bunch of stories. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can definitely watch it back. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys. Uh, I, got a, I got a video coming out tomorrow. I got a video Friday, and then I got a video the following Monday. So the video the following Monday is a day in the life. So I go through um, just kind of everything you know you'd see me wake up in the morning see me go to bed at night <laughs> and then everything in between everything business related everything personal uh personal life related all that stuff so it's just a full-on you know 15 16 minutes of the the back 
the what do they call it the deleted scenes <laughs> everything everything behind the camera uh so it, it should be cool hopefully you guys enjoy that but all right we'll see you guys later have a good one thank you to everyone who sent me recommendations when i was in japan everything that you sent me was very good and delicious and cool spots and i appreciate it very much it was very awesome we'll see you later